Good morning everyone. Hi, this is Vaishali Siddhappa and welcome to my channel which is Continental Economics. And today uh, the fourth chapter and the last concept of the fourth chapter that is market supply curve. How exactly market supply curve is going to work and what exactly the market supply. So when we are talking about market supply in the previous classes you already have seen. If you have seen my previous classes you got to know that what exactly the relationship between the price and the supply. The law of supply where price increases the quantity supply is also going to increase. If price decreases quantity supply is also going to decrease. So we all already have discussed this in our previous classes now. So now uh, before this I was talking about individual supply curve. So let me talk about now market supply curve. What exactly the market supply? In the market so many people are supplying the same individual goal. For an example, this pen is supplied for, uh, by so many people. It's not like one or two, so many sellers are there, so many producers are there who is producing this particular pen and selling it. So this way, in the market supply means combining everybody's, every sellers and combining all the sales, combining all the supply. So if just an example in the market, in any kind of a market, this pen is produced and supplied by 100 people. So in the market supply, what we are going to do is, 100 people who are supplying this, how many units of pens they have supplied, we are going to calculate that in the market supply. So right now, just for the syllabus sake, to just to make you understand, we can't consider 100 sellers or 50 sellers because in a number wise, it's really very big. So just to make you understand, we have taken only two firms here, the two producers, yet two sellers, yet two firms. So the two firms are firm A and firm B. So you have three uh, you know, diagrams here. The first diagram, which is called as panel A. The second diagram, which is panel B. The third diagram, which is panel C. So let me talk about the panel A now. The panel A is nothing but firm A and the firm B. So let me leave this. At the end, I'm going to talk about it. So right now, it's a firm A and the firm B. So when I'm talking about the firm A, so in the x-axis, you can see we have an output. The output is Q3, Q4 and Q5. Three different outputs we are showing that is Q3, Q4 and Q5. And you have x-axis. In the x axis, sorry, in the y axis, in the y axis you have three different prices P1, P2, and P3. P1, P2, P3 are prices, different prices, three different prices you have P1, P2, and P3. P1, P2 is greater than P1, P3 is greater than P2. So three different prices, three different prices, three different quantities. So now let me talk about the each form carries different cost. The third point is each firm carries different cost. If I am producing any, uh, just an example, I am owning one of a firm, I am producing this pen. For me, the cost is different from the other. Most probably in my firm technology is good because of that my cost is less. In another firm, they do not have a good technology because of that their cost is going to increase. So this way each firm is having its own different cost. So we are producing same pen doesn't mean that each everybody firm cost is same. The price most probably almost same but the cost will be definitely different from each one firm to another firm. So this is quite common in everywhere. So now, so as I said this, P3 is greater than P2 and P2 is greater than the P1 when it comes to price. So let me talk about uh, the first panel. This is a panel A. In a panel A we have a supply curve which is S1. The supply curve is called as S1. Panel A, your firm A supply curve. And this is a panel B. The panel B supply curve is S2. And we have a market supply which is SM. SM is nothing but market supply. So in this, let me talk about first of all uh, the first individual one which is panel A. What will be the situation in the panel A? So let me go with it now. In the panel A, what is happening? The panel A, panel B, you can see here when the price is P1. If the price is P1, this is a P1 and this line continues here, P1 only. This P2 line continues, P3 line 
y will be continued in the p1 below this below this no one is ready to produce below p1 no one is ready to produce not the form a not the form b for both of them it is very difficult to uh, keep a price lesser than p1 if price decreases lesser than the p1 the p1 they are okay with lesser than the p1 they are not okay because if they are producing anything when the price is lesser than p1 they are going to lose money they are going to make a loss in their uh, firm so that's why below p1 they are not ready to produce at p1 they are ready to produce and above p1 they are ready to supply see the supply curve starts from p1 only for the firm a the firm a supply starts at p1 because their cost is this the cost is p1 below this for the firm a it is a loss that means they are not supplying anything below this point they are not ready to supply so you can't you will not you will not be seeing any kind of a supply curve here because they are not supplying they are not ready to supply because for them it will be a loss clear with this p1 it's a price where they are ready to sell below this they are not ready so that's why below p1 if the price is fixed supply will be zero no there is no supply supply will be zero and when price is p2 and price is p3 especially when price is p3 they are supplying q3 when price start increases the supply is also going to increase you can see the supply curve is shifting towards the right supply started increase so definitely at p3 for a at p3 they are ready to supply q3 and if this is a price they will be supplying this much clear let's talk about the uh, firm 2 what will be the situation of the firm 2 here so in the firm 2 the supply starts here can you see price p2 p2 they are ready to supply below p2 they are not ready to supply for them the cost is more here cost is more here cost is less that is the reason why in this form p1 they are not ready to supply this is the p1 point in the p1 point they are not ready to supply why they are not ready to supply because for the firm 2 cost is really more if the cost is more definitely the price should be more in this place their cost is so high because of that the firm 2 is not ready to produce at any cost at p1 and the p2 they are okay with so here you can see at p2 the supply started for the firm 2 yeah panel b now for the p2 below p2 they are not ready to produce above p2 they are ready at p2 also they are ready at p2 they started supply you can see the supply is increasing at the firm b yeah panel sorry firm 2 yeah panel b you can see that the firm is ready to supply price when it is q p3 they are supplying q4 when the price is p3 the firm 1 is supplying q3 and the firm 2 is supplying q4 so you have already got to know uh, firm 1 and the firm 2 how they going to be here so let's talk about the market supply now how we are going to bring market supply to add the market supply q3 plus q4 q3 so the form a is uh, quantity supply is q3 and form b quantity supply is q4 if you add this not the numbers they are not adding the numbers so they just have, have given the number q3 plus q4 what is the quantity they are supplying in the market the total market supply is q5 and what is the price they are ready to sell this at the p3 at p3 form 1 is supplying q3 and form 2 is supplying q4 the total market supply will be q5 this will be q5 so then what is the total supply s1 plus s2 finally it will be derived to sm which is market supply 
So we can see here below P1 the firm is not ready to produce. Below P2 firm 2 is not ready to produce. Combiningly, so this will be the market supply what we are going to get. By adding this 2, form 1 plus form 2 will become the market supply is M otherwise MS. So 1 plus 2, form 1 plus form 2, the total supply, the market supply we are going to find out by adding both the forms. So this way in the market you will be having 100 of forms. The 100 forms each individual cost and price if you are going to add. So then finally you are going to get the market supply. So I hope you got this. So in the next class I will be coming with the fifth chapter. Thank you so much.